In a previous lecture, when we spoke about the propagation of waves, we said that all mechanical waves are capable of transporting energy when they propagate. So they transport energy from one location to a second location. But how exactly do mechanical waves transport energy? Now recall one basic fact about all mechanical waves, and this includes uh, transverse waves as well as longitudinal waves. All mechanical waves propagate through a certain medium. If a medium does not exist, as for example in a vacuum, the mechanical waves will not be able to propagate. Now the way mechanical waves transport energy in a medium is by the vibrational energies of the individual molecules that compose that specific medium. So let's suppose we have the following medium that is composed of six molecules. The way a wave propagates through the medium is, well, a force acts on molecule 1 and causes molecule 1 to propagate, causes molecule 1 to vibrate along a certain axis. And when molecule 1 begins to oscillate, it bumps into molecule 2 and transfers that vibrational energy to molecule 2. And then molecule 2 begins to vibrate or oscillate, which then bumps into molecule 3 and this continues. So the energy in a mechanical wave that propagates through a medium is transferred from one molecule of that medium to a second molecule of that medium as vibrational energy. Now if the particles vibrate in simple harmonic motion as for example in a sinusoidal wave, well then the energy is given by the following formula. So the energy is equal to one half multiplied by the spring stiffness constant multiplied by the square of our amplitude, the square of our maximum displacement. Now notice that there is no spring stiffness constant in this diagram because these aren't springs, these are vibrating molecules. So that means we want to replace K with some other value. Recall the relationship between frequency and our spring stiffness constant. So frequency is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi multiplied by the square root of k divided by m. Now if we take this equation and rearrange the equation and solve for k, we see that k is equal to 4 pi squared multiplied by frequency squared multiplied by the mass of our medium. So, if we take this entire quantity and replace it and plug it into K, we get the following equation. So our energy of our propagating wave is equal to 2 times pi squared, so we get 2 because 4 divided by 2 is 2, pi squared times mass times the frequency multiplied by the amplitude squared. And let's call this equation A. So notice this is our energy for a transverse or longitudinal mechanical wave that travels along a two-dimensional plane through some medium. So we see that the energy of the propagating two-dimensional wave is directly proportional to the frequency and is also directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. So if we double the frequency, we double the energy, and if we double the amplitude, we quadruple our energy because there's a square term here. Now, notice this equation gives us the energy for two-dimensional mechanical waves. What about three-dimensional mechanical waves? Well, we can use equation A to find our energy for three-dimensional mechanical waves that are propagating through a certain medium. Let's suppose we have a three-dimensional wave as shown by the following blue region, and that wave is propagating through a certain medium, and we take a small volumetric section of the medium through which our three-dimensional wave is traveling. So this is our small volumetric section. 
Now, since the mass of the medium of this section is equal to the density of that section times the volume, we see that the mass is also equal to the density times, well, because the volume is simply the cross-sectional area S multiplied by the length of the section L, we replace the volume with S times L. Now, what exactly is L? Well, L is this distance. And in fact, we can replace L with the product of the velocity of our wave and the time it takes our wave to travel through this volumetric region. So our length is equal to velocity times time. So we see that mass of our region of medium through which our wave is traveling is equal to the density of that region multiplied by our surface area. So this area, this cross-sectional area of the volumetric region multiplied by the velocity of the propagating wave multiplied by the time it takes our wave to travel through this volumetric region. So, if we take equation A and we plug the mass, this entire quantity, into this mass in equation A, well, we get the following equation. The energy of a three-dimensional wave is equal to 2 pi squared multiplied by the density of the medium multiplied by the cross-sectional area through which our medium is traveling multiplied by the velocity of the propagating wave multiplied by the time it takes our wave to travel a certain distance multiplied by the frequency of the wave multiplied by the square of the maximum displacement of our wave, the amplitude. So once again, this is the equation for transverse or longitudinal three-dimensional mechanical waves that propagate in a certain medium. So notice, just like equation A, let's call this equation B, equation B we see that energy is directly proportional to the frequency and directly proportional to the amplitude squared. So we see the following conclusion. We see that energy carried by mechanical waves is proportional to the frequency and proportional to the square of our amplitude. Now let's define two more important physical quantities that we need to know when we discuss energy and wave wave motion. So there is something called power and there's also something called intensity. So power which is always give which is usually given by average power which is given by this symbol on top is equal to the change in energy divided by time. So how much energy is transferred in that wave when that wave propagates over the time period that the wave travels. This gives us the rate of change of our energy per unit time. So this is equal to, well we just found out from equation B that the change in energy of our three-dimensional mechanical wave propagating the medium is given by the following equation. So if we take this equation and we plug into the numerator, we see that the time values appear on top and bottom, so they cancel out, and we see the following result. So this equation gives us the average power, which is the rate of change of energy when our wave is propagating a certain distance. Now, what about the intensity? Well, intensity is another physical quantity that is given by the lower, uh, the uppercase I. So uppercase I for intensity is equal to, well, it's the average power divided by the area, the cross-sectional area of the medium through which our power, our energy is transferring. So we take the power and we divide it by the cross-sectional area and we see that the S's will cancel and we're left with 2 pi squared multiplied by density of the medium multiplied by the velocity of the propagating wave multiplied by the frequency multiplied by the square of our amplitude. So this is the equation for intensity and intensity is the average power that is transferred per area where the area is perpendicular to the energy flow, to the motion of our wave 
through which the energy is being transported. So let's look at the following example in which we're going to use the power formula. Two waves of the same frequency travel through the same medium, but wave one carries nine times as much energy as wave number two. Find the ratio of the amplitude of the waves. So we essentially want to find the ratio of the power that is created by wave number one to the power that is created by wave number two. And we are given that the power of wave one is nine times that power of wave two. So we get the following ratio, nine P1 divided by P2, where P1 is equal to P2. So we see that our P1 is nine times that that of our P2. So we get the following result 9 multiplied by this quantity divided by this quantity. So notice the pi's will cancel, the 2's will cancel, the waves are propagating through the same medium, so the densities are the same. We assume the velocity, the frequency, and the area is also the same because we're given the frequency to be the same. So we're left with simply our a1 squared multiplied by 9 divided by a2 squared is equal to 9 because these cancel because we assume they're the same. And then if we rearrange our equation to solve for the ratio of the amplitude of wave 1 to amplitude of wave 2, we get a1 divided by a2 is equal to the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is simply 3. So we see the ratio of the amplitude of wave 1 to the amplitude of wave 2 is 3 to 1. In other words, our amplitude of wave 1 is 3 times that of the amplitude of wave 2.